Chipotle isn't your regular fast food restaurant. By today's standards, the company gets a lot of things wrong. It doesn't do drive throughs it spends too much on food, and isn't an advertising legend, but that's what you get when you start a business as a plan B. Of course, people start side projects all the time, but it's not every day that your side hustle turns out to be one of the biggest restaurant chains in the world. However, this was the story of Stephen L's. Els never wanted Chipotle to be anything other than a little something on the side. In fact, when he established the restaurant, he planned on using it as a launch pad to building a high-end restaurant. He didn't start Chipotle with the mindset that he would be successful. He just wanted the restaurant to be able to hold its own on the market, pending the time he would be able to pursue his true dream. It's kind of needless to say that that's not how it turned out for Els and Chipotle. After the very first month of running Chipotle, Els knew that his plan was never going to work out. Now before we go on, this this is Munchable, and we want you guys to like, subscribe, and smash the notifications button. It really helps us to continue bringing interesting stories to life. So, where were we? Ah, yes, Els and his failed dream. Before we get into that, we'll first have to check out what pushed Els into founding Chipotle in the first place. Was it an intense love for burritos, or did he just really, really, really hate Taco Bell? Stephen Ells was in his early 20s when he decided that he was going to have a career that centered around food. To achieve this dream, he attended the Culinary Institute of America. After he graduated from the institute, he worked as a sous chef at Star's Restaurant. In 1993, Ells decided that he'd learned enough from San Francisco and he set off on his own. His goal was to establish a high-end restaurant and make a name for himself. But it wasn't easy to do that, and establishing a high-end restaurant was expensive work. And Els wasn't exactly swimming around in cash, so he had to look for a plan B. First off, he knew that he was going to have to find some money. If his plan was going to be successful, he had to at least have a little money. But Els was jobless, and he didn't have a fortune sitting in an offshore bank account. Or any bank account, really. So he was starting at level zero. He had an empty pocket, a mind full of ideas, and uh, not much else. Lucky for him, his father had some money. So Els decided to ask for a loan. His father loaned him about $85,000, which is about $150,000 today, if we adjust for inflation. So it was a pretty penny. Quickly, what do you think? Do you think that Els can claim to be self-made after getting such a huge loan from his father? Tell us in the comments below. Have you done that? Great. Let's get back to the story. Clearly, Els decided that the money would not be enough for him to establish the kind of restaurant that he really wanted to own. The money would be able to establish a low-end fast food joint, though, so Els decided to just do that instead. His plan, of course, was simple. He would try to make the fast food joint moderately successful, and he would use the profits from it to found his real dream. That was the plan, but as you know, it went deliciously sideways. And here's how. To open his fast food establishment, Els found an old remodeled ice cream shop. The shop was an 850 square foot affair and it was located in Denver. The first location was decorated with industrial fixings and plywood and its menu consisted simply of tacos, fajitas, and large burritos that were the size of a small limb. It was just off a college campus and Els made the setup so simple that he was half convinced that the restaurant would just run itself. In fact, he designed it in a way that meant that he would be able to spend as little time there as possible. He never expected it to be his main business. The thought didn't even cross his mind once. Before Els opened Chipotle, he figured that if he sold 107 burritos per day, he would be able to turn a profit. And that profit, of course, would be saved for his high-end restaurant. So, let's get things clear. Els' best case scenario for the restaurant was 107 burritos per day. And to be fair to Els, that was a pretty high target for a new restaurant. If the restaurant was open for 12 hours, that means they'd have to sell about 8 burritos per hour. For a new restaurant, that would be a decent return. However, the economics of supply, demand, and quality didn't care too much about decent returns. By the end of the first month, the humble restaurant was already selling 1,000 burritos per day. That works out to be 80 burritos per hour. 
Now it was clear that Chipotle did not just meet expectations, but it also left expectations in the dust. It was such a roaring success that within two years, Els was considering opening another branch. And that's what he did. In 1995, the second Chipotle branch was opened, and it was entirely funded by the cash flow from the first restaurant. The third restaurant was opened soon after, and Els slowly started to realize that Chipotle could really become something huge. Els' father was starting to realize that too, and he invested another one and a half million dollars into the business. Els discovered that this was a now or never period for his business. He either had to expand now or just forget about it. Els chose to expand, and this was despite the fact that he didn't have a business plan. Well, he had one. It was a one-page affair that had only been written to help get the loan from his dad. However, after making a $24,000 profit in the first year, no one ever looked at that business plan again. He knew it wasn't going to be easy work, and he knew that he didn't have a lot of experience, and that's why he decided that he would create a board of directors and finally write an actual workable business plan. Yes, that's true. Els only wrote a good business plan when Chipotle started seeing success. That's like Justin Bieber learning how to drive after actually driving, which to be fair, it's what he's done. So moving on. At this point, the company was getting so successful that a lot of people got interested in investing, and they did. With more investment money flowing in, Els was able to expand quickly, and in 1998, the company opened its first outlet outside of Colorado. Around that period, the company started to attract the attention of huge companies like McDonald's. However, before McDonald's could invest in Chipotle, the board invited Els over. They asked him to prepare a typical serving of Chipotle burritos and tacos, and he did. They absolutely savored it and invested in the company. In the first year, McDonald's invested about $50 million in Chipotle, which, to be honest, was kind of a small amount for McDonald's. But it was absolutely huge for Chipotle. It was a new era of expansion, and boy oh boy did Els expand. Under McDonald's, Chipotle grew from a small restaurant with about 13 outlets to one with 500. Unfortunately, or fortunately, well, it really depends on who you ask for being 100% honest, McDonald's and Chipotle split after about seven years, and Chipotle went public. On the first day of trading, Chipotle saw a 100% increase in the company's stock, and they used that extra money to fund further expansion. Throughout the course of McDonald's involvement with Chipotle, they had invested about $360 million, and they were able to take out about $1.5 billion. In 2008, Chipotle took a giant step forward and opened its first restaurant outside the United States in Toronto. In 2010, the company was ranked the third fastest growing company in America, and it was ranked the best Mexican fast food chain in 2011. Today, Chipotle serves about 750,000 customers per day. The restaurant has about 2,500 locations scattered all over the continent. And they were able to achieve all this because Steve Ells wanted to raise money to build a high-end restaurant. He failed, but in a weird roundabout way, he succeeded. That's why we have Chipotle today. That's all for today, guys. Tune in every week for more interesting stories about your favorite food brands.